Okay, Dad. Um, what we've got here is a um, small set of uh, tools that are going to demonstrate to you how to solder the cabling for your home theatre speaker system. I'm using a uh, clamp to hold the work, so I've both got a heat sink and a, a third hand, as it were, to help me do that. That is the item that we'll be soldering, which is your RCA plug. These ones are red, you've seen the white ones, um, that's what you'll be working with. Now to prep the wire, um, you simply just need to cut, or in my case use your fingernails, the, the centre of the wire, splice them apart, it's figure 8 cable, so it's designed to come apart into two pieces like that, and it's still insulated all the way along. It doesn't really matter how much you take off there. Um, at the end of the day, the neatness of the job comes down to how much you want to take off. Now, in terms of taking off cable, um, I'm actually using a tool designed to strip wire. It's uh, particularly handy for this kind of work because it's instant and, as you can see, does a pretty good job of stripping wire. The tool that you bought um, when I was there last uh, will do the job equally as well. The first step for soldering anything is to prepare the surfaces that you're working with. In the case of the wires, you really need to twist them so you don't get any fraying at the end because we're going to tin the wire later with a bit of solder. So we'll just rest that up here in the alligator clips, not too hard, just gentle grip and we'll zoom in on that in a minute. The next thing we're going to prepare is of course the um, RCA plug in this case. So they should screw apart, they come in two parts, the uh, cable protector and the actual RCA internals. So as you can see there we have a centre pin which is connected, you can just see it there. Uh, the centre pin is connected to the centre piece of work there which is the shorter of the two splades that has a hole in it and the outer sort of earth shell if you like is connected to the big long one which has the cable protector on it as well at the end there with it still have got a hole in the middle so through the hole is where we're trying to go and of course you've got a small space to work in you're trying not to short out the circuit by joining the wires together or overheat the whole thing while you're soldering and have it melt in your hands so the sheath is going to go across the two wires so poke them gently through the sheath, the correct way round of course, so that when you bring the connector on it can come back up and screw gently on. So we'll put the sheath on, in fact we can take it as far away as we like out of the picture and uh, it won't get in the road when you're soldering. I plan to be soldering the centre pin first, um, so I'm going to earth or grip onto the RCA adapter at that point on the alligator clip. You can use uh, your, your bench vise or whatever you've got handy. It really doesn't matter. It's not critical, um, but it's it's important that you do get a nice sort of solid connection to uh, to a heatsink of some kind. The first thing we're going to do, actually, before we go any further, is we're going to tin the wire. Tinning the wire is is basically putting some solder onto the tips of the wire to a give it some solder to initially melt when we start doing some real soldering down the track but also it keeps all these wires from fraying now with your hot soldering iron which if you have the battery operated variety or the gas variety should be an instant on or five seconds to get to the maximum heat fire it up and get some solder onto the end of the, uh, the soldering iron. Here we have the soldering iron, bit of prep put a bit of solder on there, see it start to burn that's the solder melting onto the soldering iron now you'll get yourself a little bit of a bubble there that's when you should clean the head and you'll notice that that leaves a nice all you know you do that with the with either the scouring pad or with the sponge and you get a nice little tinning on the end of the soldering iron just the tip nothing more clean 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 and there you have a nice clean finish so in order to tin a piece of wire you simply need to heat up the end of the wire at some point and then 
gently rub the solder across the wire. As the wire is heating up, the tin should eventually melt and absorb straight. There we go, absorb straight into the wire. The next step is where we're going to try and get the red wire through the little hole here. So, again, just come in for your benefit. The wire is going to come from either side at this point, doesn't really matter. Come up through the hole and then oh, sit it over there so we don't a nice straight connection. Excellent. What you want to end up with is both pieces of insulated wire sitting nestled in that little metal clasp there. One going up, one going down. So as we turn that around to its side there, you can see we have one wire coming up through the center pin and the black wire going down through the earth pin there. My intention is to heat up specifically the pin because that has the greatest heat sink and then when I can see that the solder on perhaps the wire is starting to melt we can then add a piece of sol solder to the equation here. Now you can see I'm holding the soldering iron behind the wire and I'm just touching to see if it's starting to melt I can see some little smoke wafting up. I can see my solder start to disappear away as I tap in. And as it gets hot enough, it should all suddenly just take like glue and suddenly just adhere like that. Look at that. It's just adhered. Can you see that? And note that I haven't lost any of my insulation underneath it didn't get too hot. George, get set for a mind-blowing afternoon. Attention Class A drivers, you have 15 minutes to qualify. Now you're getting with it. Final step is to see it all fit, so we should be able to pull the uh, sheath up here. It should happily go across our two solder joints. You may need to hold the whole structure straight so you don't get threaded, and that's easier said than done. So if it's not working for you again, you can bend the two sections inside as long as there's no short circuit between the two wires and that's where if the uh, insulation has done its job it's staying there to protect. So there we can screw the RCA connector together and touch wood we have a new connector on the end of our cable. There you go.